Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking your time to look at this review paper titled Neuropathic Diabetic Foot Ulcers, Evidence to Practice. My name is Dr. Agbon Dibako and I'm a clinical research fellow at the University of Manchester and also a specialist registrar at the Manchester Royal Infirmary. I also work on the International Working Group on the Diabetic Foot. I work on this review with my colleagues Dr. Leonard Eber and Dr. Aloysius Mbako. Now, as you're well aware, diabetes prevalence worldwide is increasing and attending on to this, there's an expected increase in foot complications. Curbing the rising burden of foot complications has to occur through the use of cost-effective but also robust um, therapies that have been underpinned by clinical evidence. Unfortunately, there's a plethora of clinical literature, most of which most ordinary clinicians would find it difficult and arduous to appreciate during their day-to-day -day clinical practice. Hence, this review sought to look at two key questions. The first question was to look at therapies that have been shown to improve wound healing rates. And the second question was to look at therapies that have been shown to improve the prevention of new ulceration. We did a comprehensive assessment of literature using search engines such as PubMed, Cochrane Library, NHSK, Clinical Care, and a whole host of other search engines. We considered for this review meta-analysis, systematic reviews, randomized control trials, and where there was paucity of evidence, we considered also uh, prospectively designed studies. Which therapies have been shown to improve wound healing rates? Of loading, through the use of casting devices are key to the treatment of diabetic neuropathic foot ulcers. The gold standard being the total contact cast, but also other forms of casting such as instant total contact cast can be used with great clinical efficacy. Debridement is another modality that has been shown across a whole range of clinical trials to be efficacious in improving wound healing. Simple debridement is just as good as surgical debridement. Other specific forms of debridement such as hydrogel and lava debridement have been shown to be efficacious, albeit in rather small trials. Hence the efficacy needs to be established in carefully designed bigger trials. Infection control is key to reducing local microbial flora that can impair wound healing. There has been no study to suggest that one particular antimicrobial agent is better than another. In fact, simple agents such as a combination of amoxicillin and clavinatic acid have been shown to be equally efficacious compared to newer agents such as linezolid. How about newer techniques such as vacuum-assisted wound closure? Vacuum-assisted wound closure has been shown to be important and efficacious in surgical wounds, particularly in post-amputation ulcers, because it can transform complex wounds to simple wounds. Agents such as honey, despite their use since antiquity, have unfortunately not been supported by robust clinical evidence, so their widespread use cannot be advised. What about therapies that prevent new foot ulceration or re-ulceration in people with a past history of ulcers. There is a maxim that education is central to preventing diabetic foot ulceration. However, educational interventions so far have provided evidence that have been rather thin and controversial. It is possible that educational interventions so far considered in the literature include with them other interventions such as specialist referrals and also provision of things like therapeutic foodways. So carefully designed trials are warranted to tease out the additional value of education in preventing diabetic foot ulcers. Very recently my colleagues in Arizona and Texas have shown quite elegantly that monitoring the temperature of the foot can provide warning signs that can help us prevent ulceration, the so-called temperature monitoring. However, this technique has only been studied in a rather limited category of patients and therefore bigger studies are warranted to validate their use. 
How about the use of adjuvant therapies? A whole plethora of adjuvant therapies have been suggested to improve wound healing. Those that have been considered in the literature include platelet derived growth factors, granulocyte stimulating factor, and also hyperbaric oxygen. Unfortunately, there's a striking paucity and depth of data to suggest that these therapies are efficacious in improving healing times. But most importantly, there are other simple cost-effective measures that I've enlisted above. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, adequate care and prevention of diabetic foot ulcers depend on what you take out of the foot rather than what you put onto it. Things that need to be taken out of food including, includes things like pressure relief through the use of casting and offloading devices, debridement, infection control, and in some areas, vacuum-assisted wound closure. Agents that you put onto the food, such as adjuvant therapies, have unfortunately not shown robust evidence in terms of preventing wound ulceration or also preventing new food ulcers. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, you've enjoyed listening to this uh, talk, this video abstract, and I hope you're going to take time to appreciate the subtleties of all the analyses that we considered during this review. Thank you for listening.